Welcome everybody to my program about the Deepwater Horizon Incident Part 4. As you can see I have mounted two videos on one screen now and uh, one video is running too fast as I made some mistakes while recording. The video in the left upper frame is a research on seismic activities on April 20, 2010. The video in the lower frame is uh, recorded from ROV images on the BP website. What you see there is a weekend operation of the ROVs removing debris from the seaside. What you see here is an ROV coming into troubles with an oil or gas eruption from the seafloor. Soon you see one of my favorite videos of the Happy Fish Rock feeds from offshore Mexican Pacific Coast. The operators are ever seem to have the advice to avoid offshore tunnel Some of the ROVs have their GPS coordinates on display, some have not. The coordinates of the incident site begin with 1202. The other operation area, 3 miles westward, begins with the coordinates 187. The coordinates of this ROV showing the fishes on the next scene begin with 1187, which is in the Pacific near to the Mexican coast. William says there was trouble from the start. Getting to the oil was taking too long. How long did you expect it to take? We were told 21 days. How long did it actually take? Uh, we were at six weeks. With the schedule slipping, William says a BP manager ordered a faster pace. And he requested to, to the driller, hey, let's bump it up, let's bump it up. And what he was talking about there is he's, he's bumping up the rate of penetration, how fast the drill bit is going down. William says going faster caused the bottom of the well to split open, swallowing tools and the drilling fluid called mud. We actually got stuck. And we got stuck so bad that we had to send tools down into the drill pipe and sever the pipe. That well was abandoned. Deepwater Horizon had to drill a new route to the oil. It cost BP more than two weeks and millions of dollars. We were informed of this during one of the safety meetings that somewhere in the neighborhood of $25 million was lost in bottom hole assembly and mud. And you always kind of knew that in the back of your mind when they start throwing these big numbers around that th there was going to be a push coming, you know, a push to, to, to pick up production, pick up the The RDP has made an inspection in this abandoned pipe in which, as Mike William just said before, the drilling pipe got stuck. As you can see, there's no pressure inside the riser and the particles inside are falling down there. At the beginning of this part you have seen two graphics, one is by you sign and one is by myself. The series of the salt dome was brought uh, up by new sign and that I think is a theory which matches the most facts we have observed and seen during the last weeks. Some Akondo prospect in the MC252 is surrounded by four giant vertical salt domes. As I believe, differently to horizontal salt layers, those vertical salt domes rather seem to be from the ocean. Those vertical salt domes often have a form of a bottle. It means they become wider to the If the pee now just drill downwards as each uh, drilling is done, at any depth now they drill into this salt dome. That's the theory. From now on, water and drilling fluid could run into the salt dome. Both fluids began to dissolve the salt and form channels downward and upward to the sea. After the gushing riser at relocation A was plugged at end of July, gas and oil began more and more to leak out of the sea floor. Many ask now whether there is a volcano below. As I believe, the heat of the oil and the irregular pressure speak at least for a volcanic magma weighing below that heats up the oil reservoir. 
So there seems not to be any pressure inside the riser. The gas pressure below the riser seems to have found a way sidewards into the formation. This happens because the specific weight of the water in the riser is higher than the weight of the column of oil which has meanwhile surged up to the salt zone. The fact that the pressure of the gas finds its way sideways into the formation is a good proof for the salt dome theory. The camera is now going to come to the lower end of the riser where the twirling pipes stuck inside its formation. As the numbers on the display show, the camera is now at a depth of 5012 meters below sea level. reached the lower end of the riser and makes an inspection inside the cave the gas has formed out there. This second part of the video now shows a kind of seabed inspection carried out by BP and of August 2010. I thank my viewers for watching my videos and apologize for the not very perfect audio commentary I tried here. It's hard to command those technical and scientific 
letters anyway and I'm not a very experienced commentator at all. Nevertheless, I hope you will um, watch again my videos and so we will soon meet again next time, same station. Bye bye. We're here in the Arctic Ocean protesting against Cairn Energy who are drilling for oil here in this pristine environment. Today Cairn say they found gas which could be a precursor for finding oil. This may be a big step forward for them and their profits but it's a huge step back for our chances of stopping catastrophic climate change. If oil is found here in the Arctic all the big companies BP, Chevron, Exxon will be coming to prospect in this pristine and fragile environment. We're calling on them to go beyond oil, to start investing in clean, green, renewable energies.